Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side of the Sea of Galilee while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain to pray by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. <laughs> so Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to see, sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand, and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why do you doubt? When, he got, when they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. <laughs> to Moses, wow, who does he think he is? Jesus Christ? <laughs> Moses has had enough by this point. And he says, no, he knows he's Jesus Christ. He thinks he's Tiger Woods. <laughs> <laughs> you got to laugh. Come on. <laughs> All right. A joke like that really makes plain the problem of being a Christian in today's age. 2,000 years ago when our scriptures were written down in a different culture with different demands and different expectations of holy people, 2,000 years ago maybe walking on the water was the thing to do. But speaking to Christians, who hopefully we're intelligent enough Christians of our 21st century, I really wish we hadn't done stuff like that. I mean, it makes my life harder. Why couldn't he have just stayed on the dry land and stuck with the teaching and the healing? These really flashy miracles just lead to intellectual distress and, well, rather cheesy jokes as well. In my experience, I have found that the best way to deal with these types of miracles is to sort of look beyond them. When it comes to walking on water or virgin birth or raising the dead, I just set aside the intellectual part, that voice that asks me if it really happened like that. Is it true? I add that question to my sort of someday list. Someday, I will know the answers when I do get to meet Jesus and I have the chance to ask questions. Maybe there will be like an orientation session when we get to heaven where we're given the answers because, well, we all know that many people have had to ask these same questions before, right? 
I don't know. So instead of asking if Jesus really did walk on the water, we're going to ask a different question. One that honors our belief that God is speaking to us today in this gospel reading as much as on the day that it was written down. Where are we in this text? Where are we? And Jesus made his disciples get into the boat, go on ahead of him to the other side. When evening came, he was there alone, but the boat was already a considerable distance from the land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Where are we in this text? Consider this scenario. We have a bunch of disciples out in a boat all alone in the evening in a rising wind. We have a group of faithful people gathered together. Their leader is not with them. There is a crisis. And people take sides and feelings are hurt. Those who cannot stand the stress or change have already left the boat and the ones that remain are watching the sky get dark. Can you find yourself in this text? Or try this one. We have a bunch of disciples in a boat all alone, in the evening, in a rising wind. We have a group of faithful people gathered together. Their leader is not with them. We live in a prosperous company, country, neighbor to a prosperous country, allies with other prosperous countries, but all of that is threatened because of an enemy we cannot see. A microscopic virus threatened our way of life. Frustrations and fear were at high levels. People were protesting about issues that they may or may not have understood. The sky is getting darker. Can you find yourself in that text? I think we all can. Or we have a bunch of disciples out in a boat all alone in the evening in a rising wind. Your family is facing a crisis. It's a medical diagnosis, it's a divorce, it's an accident, a mental health issue, a loss of a job, whatever. You cannot find your leader. And that sky is getting darker. Can you find yourself in this text? I know I'm there sometimes. Not all the time, but I've certainly been there. I know the feeling. And what, what does the gospel give us when we are there in that point? During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them, walking on the water. Walking on the water. That's it. It just sort of drops into that sentence as if this was normal behavior, like driving down the road or biking up the hill or walking on the water. No commentary. Jesus just went out to them, walking on the water. The most important part of that sentence is so easy for us to miss because we get distracted by the dazzle, the flashy miracle part of that, the walking on the water. We miss the beginning, that Jesus went out to them. He went to them. It doesn't matter how he got there, does it? It matters that he got there, that when they needed him, he came. That when they were afraid, he went to them. That when the wind came up and the disciples were in danger, there he was. The point is, is that Jesus came. He could have used a jet ski and the story wouldn't change. The point is, he was there. When conflict arises, Jesus comes to us. When the world as we know it seems to be dissolving around us, Jesus comes to us. When your family is stretched almost beyond its ability to survive, Jesus is there. 
when we realize our lives are bound in sin, Jesus came and died for us. And that's where we find ourselves in this text. Out in the boat, enveloped in fear. Not hoping that Jesus will come. Not wishing that Jesus would come. But proclaiming that he did indeed come to us. That he is with us now and he will always be there with us. Jesus said to them, take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Take courage. Courage, faith, and hope. Don't be afraid because whatever we are going through, Jesus has responded to it before. He didn't only respond one time to those disciples. He responded over and over and over again. Jesus came to this earth, lived out a life of faith. He died for us, was resurrected, and he continues to come to us again and again and again. Thanks be to God. Amen.